Historically, Japan has often been surrounded by dangerous earthquakes and tsunamis. Although it is impossible to escape earthquakes and tsunamis, Japan has no option but to confront them. Welcome to Pank TV's videos once again. In the last 1300 years, about 143 tsunamis have attacked Japan, as a result of which 1,30,874 people have lost their lives. The most dangerous of these was in the year 1741, in which the tsunami wave was 90 meters high. Unfortunately, as time goes by, the threat of tsunamis is also increasing in Japan. More than 300 earthquakes have been recorded in just 2022, so that many times three to four earthquakes have been recorded in a day. Japan is the only country in the world where earthquakes are so common that it is compulsory for skyscrapers to make earthquake proof here. However, from 2000 to 2022, Japan has endured small and large tsunamis five times, in which the 2011 tsunami was the deadliest. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake of 9.1 magnitude in the sea, 72 kilometers east of the Oshika Peninsula, lasted for six minutes, causing a massive giant tsunami. This was the fourth largest earthquake in the world, while it was the largest in Japan's recorded history. As a result, the tsunami created a 55 meter or 180 feet high wave in the sea. The water waves entered Sendai City at a speed of 700 km per hour and reached within 10 km from the coast. The biggest problem with tsunamis is that it cannot be predicted even by modern technology. Therefore, thousands of residents of Sendai, who were warned of the tsunami just eight minutes ago, could not even get a chance to escape. As a result of this incident, 228,000 people lost their homes and 15,000 people lost their lives. On the one hand, there was a state of emergency, so on the other hand, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant also failed here, causing a dangerous nuclear disaster. This tsunami damaged Japan by a total of $235 billion, which is also considered the most expensive disaster in the world. Now the question arises, why does Japan always get involved in tsunamis? The biggest reason for this is Japan's geographical location. This whole part of the Pacific Ocean that you are seeing is the source of 90% earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis in the world. This ring that is being formed is called the Ring of Fire. The most active volcanoes in the world are present below it, which are surrounded by many tectonic plates. And it is unfortunate for Japan that it comes right on the belt of this ring. This is why there are earthquakes every day, and every year there is a typhoon or tsunami attack. In addition to all these difficulties, Japan also has another problem, and that is that 70% of Japan's land area is only filled with mountains, and the 30% flat surface is mostly present only in coastal areas, where the threat of tsunamis is constantly increasing. Shifting entire cities to the mountains is an impossible task. But Japan has been working hard for centuries to save its coastal cities, and its approach is unique. Japan has built seawalls on the coast to save its high-risk areas, and this is not something new. But seawalls have been part of Japan's coast for a long time. In 1896 and 1933, a terrible typhoon attacked a village called Taro in Japan. But after that, this village became a great example of the coastal defense system, where Japan built two walls 2.4 kilometers long and 10 meters high and saved the village from sea waves to a great extent. After that, similar structures were built in Japan's other coastal cities. But the 2011 tsunami was much larger than these walls. Sea walls, which were built to stop waves only 8 meters high, these tsunami waves were 12 to 15 meters high. These 10-meter walls, although stopped the tsunami waves to a great extent, but at many points, the waves destroyed the entire structure. After the 2011 earthquake, Japan decided to make the sea walls higher and longer. For this purpose, $12 billion was allocated, and it was decided that a 400-kilometer long, 15-meter high wall would be built on the eastern coast. These walls are 5 meters higher than the previous walls 
while their foundation has strengthened its roots to 25 metres underground. Their width has also been kept much larger than before, and their structure and design have been specially designed to stop tsunami waves. For this purpose, an artificial tsunami was created using a simulator with which engineers tested the walls on all kinds of wave patterns. With the help of a vibrator, a pattern similar to the 2011 earthquake was created. How big the waves will be, how much pressure will they generate, all this was calculated with the help of a simulator. The simulator noticed that the 2011 tsunami waves did not directly damage Japan, but it travelled forward in the form of a flood. And this happened because the sea walls had broken the pressure of the waves to a great extent. After testing on the simulator, the sea walls have now been designed in a curved shape, in which it can be clearly seen that when water collides with the seawall, wall, its curved shape will make the wave turn back like this. And in this way, one wave will turn back and break the pressure of the second wave coming from behind. To break the pressure of tsunami waves, Japan not only built walls, but also built breakwaters near the hotspot locations in the sea. When the waves move towards the coast, first this breakwater breaks their pressure, and then these 15 metre high walls. On the other hand, local communities are particularly annoyed with this seawall because at many places these walls are as high as a four-storey building, which makes people feel like they are trapped in a jail. Some people are afraid that Japan will lose its tourists because of these seawalls. Japan has divided the tsunamis into two different levels. Level 1 tsunami, which comes every 50 to 60 years, their waves are up to 15 metres high and these walls have been built for them. But level two tsunami, which comes once in hundreds of years or 1,000 years, these sea walls will not be able to stop it alone. For this, tsunami mitigation parks will be built on the hotspot locations. These parks will have a wall of trees that will not only break the tsunami pressure, but when the water goes back to the sea, it also takes a lot of objects with it. They will also work to stop large objects like trees. Japan's seawall engineering is a surprising phenomenon and to some extent beneficial in dealing with the devastating tsunami. Japan is doing its best to protect itself from natural disasters. But at the same time, Japan is also aware of the fact that this seawall is not a permanent solution. Increasing global warming is increasing the sea level day by day. Storms are intensifying and earthquakes have become a daily routine. Japan is well aware that this giant structure will not be able to provide 100% protection from natural disasters. By spending $12 billion, Japan has actually bought time for its people, so that when these walls break the pressure of the waves, people will have time to get out of there. I hope you will like and share this video of Pank TV. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next video.